of the residency is the entwined nature of people and lives and landscape. So I wanted to try and find those connections as best I could. I got here on the 1st of July 2020 and I started working with some photography and some starting to do some filming and drawing but initially I started by thinking about how I wanted to approach the 10 months. My original plan was to make a film and work with the local community and get interviews and footage with people. I, I wanted to start by thinking about the, the man-made elements in the natural landscape because I've been working in cities for the last 10 years and this was a big shift coming to a rural area. So I guess I started by thinking, well, how is, what impact is that going to have on my work? And trying to see things in, in reverse. So instead of finding plant life and natural, the natural world in the city, I'd be trying to look for the man-made in the rural landscape, which of course it turned out it, it is all man-made and there's nothing really wild or, you know, untouched by human hands. Everything is, is affected by the way we live our lives and you really can't pull the human and the natural apart. They're so deeply interwoven and entwined. The landscape around the area of Tarsit and the North Tyne more generally is very managed by humans and very created and designed and you know it's been used by humans for hundreds and hundreds of years. So I started thinking about Kielder, the landscape of Kielder as being like a digitally rendered kind of environment, which then developed into models and maquettes and a 3D model on the computer as well. And then some isometric drawings, trying to translate these things from two dimensions, as I was using maps quite a lot, looking at maps all the time, and then seeing them from above in the map view, but then seeing them above in aerial photographs as well and gradually sort of working backwards and forwards between two and three dimensions um, with maquettes and models and the 3D model on the computer versus a handmade cardboard cutout of the contour lines. And then the thing that really stood out to me, because there were, there were many different threads that I picked up at the beginning about the artificial natural, but the one I decided to stick with about halfway through the residency was the commercial plantations, the commercial woodland, because the bogs, the moors were very interesting as well. But I knew I had to kind of focus on just one thing. So I decided to focus on the Tarsit watershed, so just the area that the water drains into the Tarsit burn. The plantations became, for me, the manifestation of the artificial natural. So, you know, you've got a, a natural process going on that is the growth of the tree, but it's highly managed and controlled by um, humans. And at the moment, you know, there are lots of questions about what we need to do to preserve the, the natural assets that we have. And I, I started taking them as, um, a few in particular, as kind of case studies. So I've got the one that I've made um, the maquette of, which is a piece of hillside really close to, to um, High Green, which is a three by three square, a uh, grid reference square from a map. Those nine grid reference squares, also I replicated them in an isometric drawing. 
So it's the exact same area with the same contour lines, um, but on a two-dimensional surface, but represented as 3D. And then I also have a three-dimensional model, a digital 3D model on the computer. So all of these three models were made by tracing the same contour lines again and again and again. So I ended up learning the shape of the hill and the valley really, really well because I, I must have traced over each individual contour line maybe about 12, 15 times in order to put them onto the computer, to draw them in the first place in two dimensions, then to make that three dimensional in the tracing paper to make the cutouts for the maquette. And then there's also this rhomboid on top, which is Gleadly Plantation. And then I've been filming in that plantation as well. So the footage that I've collected, I think I've been filming there about six or seven times. I've only ever once been with another person, so when I go there it's usually alone. And generally it looks very different when you get in there. It's a lot greener and there's a lot more going on than you realise. There is a lot more variety in there than, this, than what you see from the map or an aerial photograph. So I suppose the relationship between the drawings and the film is trying to see things from ground level and from above and moving backwards and forwards between these forms. I've been working up to this way of working for a long time. It feels very continuous from the work I've made previously, but having all of this time and space and you know the resources of the residency to just focus on the work has meant that I can actualize all of the things that were just potential in the past. So being able to work with partner organizations and local people is something that I've not been able to do before. One thing that I'm quite happy about is that it's made people look at the plantations a lot more closely because the place that you live, you don't really pay much attention to it after a while, you know. Because of COVID and having to work with only one person at a time, that's been quite a good constraint because it means that I have a format to film in which works really easily. I can go with one person walking and we walk and talk and I film. And the conversation flows a lot more freely when walking, so I found it to be a really, really interesting way to pick up on certain details in these plantations or on the moorlands, looking at the plantations. I think getting people to look again, whether it's for good or bad, has been really interesting, watching people's reactions and saying, I've never looked so, I've never looked so hard at these plantations before until we went for a walk there.